Special Assistant to Governor Sonwolu on the CBD, as well as Head of Operations, Papua Traffic Management and Enforcement Committee. Thank you for joining us Thank today. Thank you for having me. Well, I think a, a congratulation is in place, you know, for your appointment as the Acting MD of Nigerian Ports Authority. You do you know that you have, I don't know, should I call it shoes to fill now or an arduous task on your hands? Job um, to continue, rather. Beg your pardon? A job to continue. On. Oh, certainly. Yes, but I mean, you no, know, it's not so easy. No, please don't continue. Easy. We don't want to continue seeing that congestion on the roads, please. But what, how do you, when you, you, I mean, knowing that you have to do this job and your first challenge, so to speak, will be to take on that seemingly intractable congestion at the port. How did you feel? So the first thing I did on um, assumption of duty was first of all to look at the current system in place, mm. which is the ATO system, that's the electronic truck call-up system. And I paid a visit to the main uh, truck park itself, which was Lily Pond, to see what was happening. Uh, and I went around, I went into the ports, and first of all, the idea is for me to have first-hand uh, understanding on what the problem is. And uh, we held a meeting with uh, TTP, which is the company that deployed ETO on behalf of Nigerian Post Authority. And we analyzed what has been happening from February to May. And we observed lapses. One of the lapses we observed was the non-deployment of the electronic systems, IT systems that should have been in place in some locations, in some of the satellite uh, truck parks. We also looked at the non-deployment of physical infrastructure like bollards, like uh, the automated gates. And we sat down with them and we gave them ultimatums to say, you must deploy these things. If you don't deploy them, the essence of A2 actually was to streamline the movement of cargo in and out of the port, reduce human interference, and speed up that process. And for as long as there is human interference, there will be delay, there will be extortion, and so on and so forth. And when we did that, immediately all the deployments, not immediately, maybe a few weeks later, everything that should be deployed at the APAPA axis has been deployed. And I can tell you that we have been able to reduce traffic, the backlog, mm. the long tail of traffic. Formerly it gets as far as Surulere. But we have oh. been able to now try to contain it. It is reducing, it is within APAPA now. Mm. What do we need to do? We need to work on the issue of human interference, stealing of ETO tickets, and so on and so forth. Hmm. Stealing of ETO tickets? Yes. So you have situations where a trucker is along the route, and he has his ETO ticket. In the next bus stop, a security agent stops him to say, let me see your ETO ticket, and the ETO ticket number is 1234567. And probably he is um, so many kilometers away. And they cram that number, and then call a truck that is ahead, that doesn't have a two ticket, and give that truck that a two oh number. God. And that person will enter a certain building around a papa, and probably in 15 to 20 minutes, they also get a plate number printed for them, wow. and they match it and get into the port. So the proper owner now shows up, and what the happens? The proper owner shows up, and his ticket has been used. And that's why we have now requested that TTP should change it to QR code. When you have a QR code, you'll be able to just scan it and you go through, you can't just cram a QR code. Okay. As it's for the thing and access. My, my apologies, my yeah. apologies. Uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. And I'm, I'm, I mean, this is mind-blowing what you just told us now. But, you know, I think it was about a month or two ago, we got this information on the front pages of the newspapers that there is a daily 100 million or 100 billion naira extortion at the ports. I was stunned. Um. And now you have also, you know, kind of uh, at least mentioned something similar now. Is there a way to track the individuals behind this dastardly act? Because if 100 million naira just leaves or sucked or pulled from the economy of people who do these businesses, it is a natural, Corruption. the natural consequence is increasing prices of the things that have been brought in. So is there a way to track the people who are behind these acts? So what we have discovered is, first of all, there are security officials that have been working within that, we call it the red zone. So that is the Tinkan Apapa area. 
that have probably been posted there for four, five, six years, and they are still there. Oh. We have requested that they should please be posted out of that location. Let's bring a new set of persons that will actually truly work for Nigeria. Uh, we have had cases where there was proof or that people were seen to have extorted, but you need to have proof. What we have now done is to say, you know what, let's look at how many checkpoints should be there. We held a meeting with all the security agencies about three weeks ago, and we said, let's all go set up a team and identify how many checkpoints should you have along, along that corridor. Mm -hmm. So let's assume you identify six. It means that when you wake up the next day and you find 16, that means there are 10 illegal checkpoints. <laughs> and then also, it is only right that each of the formations, so whether it is LASMA, whether it is police, whether it's the army, if they are, whoever is posting, and MPA itself, we also have MPA staff working security officials working at those checkpoints. Everyone should have the name of the staff posted at each of the checkpoints. Now, if you do that, and there's proof of extortion on a certain day, at a certain location, then we should be able to know the officers involved in, in charge, it. Yeah. But the interesting fact in, in all of this is that things have evolved now. You now have area boys, ECOMOG boys as they call them. And a few weeks ago, there was even more like a battle on who extorts at which location. <laughs> <laughs> so they now, um, it's really not funny, you know. So, so, so you find that they now stand by the side oh, and extort. They are extorting while others are standing by the side. So, um, waiting to, to receive their share. Waiting to receive the share. But let me also state this clearly. We have had the cooperation of the Navy, the police, the military, and everyone that is involved in this, they have made efforts to ensure that this stops. I know that actions were taken by the Navy, mm. and we thank them for that. I know the police also took action to reduce it. What you have are errant officers at times that are off duty, and they just show up with uniform with a gun, okay. and they perpetrate these okay. actions. Okay. Now, <laughs> Mr. Giba, um, you are the head of operations, the APAPA Traffic Management Enforcement Committee. Um, I mean, I do appreciate you haven't been there for long, but how has your task been and how are you dealing with it? Uh, basically, like he said, uh, I was trying to tell him ahead when we entered the studio that we should first understand how the system works. Then we can talk about the, the management of the traffic. Uh, the governor of Lagos State graciously said we should work with this committee, set up this committee, elected by the Special Advisor Transportation. And we've been working with MPA to manage that traffic. Now, what happens is this. We need, we are concerned with the traffic on the road. Uh -huh. However, if we do not understand what the working of MPA and the two system, there there's no way you can. There's, there yeah. will be no way. Yeah. However, in discussing chaos in Apapa, like I said earlier, we need to look at it from two perspectives. There are two ports in Apapa, that's one. Then the question we're not asking, is what is the capacity of the port. As the, the port as it is has exceeded its own capacity, I'm sure the MD can speak to that, and then the port has met with the residents. So, however, we we'll always see traffic in a park. And when I say traffic, not gridlock, okay. there will always be, because the rate at which a truck moves is different from the rate at which a car moves. Mm -hmm. You understand it now? So definitely, as it is right now, we do about 3,600 trucks in both ports. A day. And you know what that means? Two is either you enter through Ijora to LPC port or you come in from mile two to Tin Camp port. Since we started, all you should do, like I said earlier on the program I attended, Google now from here to a papa, how long will it take you to get there? With a papa, I can say comfortably that we have been able to reduce traffic to the barest minimum. You can always go to your house, except sometimes, you see, what happens is that with the system that is in place, Trucks are supposed to come from what is called uh, satellite parks, where it's just like you want to book your ticket. You cannot just come to the port like it was doing before. This, that's what this e-call-up system is. So you just you book, and then based on the availability of the terminal, what you want to go and do there, and then the traffic on the road, that is only when you can come. But what is happening right now is that some trucks, like he explained, still want to come to the road. Without the e too. No, they still do it too. So we yeah. did what is called a time belt for each categories of trucks that are coming to the port at particular time, based on the studies of how the terminal operates. So, for example, most of the industrial trucks, 
that is the Gang Dangote, Honeywell, and so mm. We gave them to come at midnight because they have a lot of fleets. So between 12 midnight and 4 a.m., that's when you're supposed to see those. But some people will still want to come. Mm. You understand it now? So okay. that's what you see. However, I can tell you comfortably here that a papa axis, that is the Jora or some Surulere axis to a papa to the LPC port, is in place. In fact, no truck can get into LPC without the two. So, uh, so let, what you let, see, let, that's let's LPC. be interested in uh, the a papa port. Okay. okay. Let, let's be more interested. I, I'm more interested for you. From you, I'm more interested in the traffic management. Yes. Well, we just found out now that between here, where we are now, and Aquaqua port, it's almost one hour, 30 minutes, 90 minutes. I think when you were growing up, it would be maybe 30 minutes or thereabout. Okay. No, no, I, I, I just wanted to let you know that okay. I mean, we, we just you know, found out that now. But there's something that the MD said, the acting MD said I would like you to speak to. He talked about the, the, the uh, operations of thoughts. Of, of touts in the in the environment, how and, and how that they, and they are not within and, the ports and unauthorized security agents and unauthorized security agents, unauthorized checkpoints, mm. and these unauthorized checkpoints, uh, they they are not inside the ports; they are outside, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. on so, the roads, they are outside the okay. port jurisdiction. So, you know, we speak to that because most certainly that is also um, uh, a catalyst for for uh, traffic. traffic bottle ups. Yeah, thank you very much. You see. The system that we have in place for movement of trucks from a papa and then from Tinka is that last month, FRSC, uh, MPA security personnel are supposed to be at like a identified post okay. junctions. And then the last meeting we had, we reduced this number so that we can make sure that this does not happen. But what happened is in the middle of the night, when myself and you are sleeping, Police that are not on duty just create it. You understand that? Because they are used to this before, before now, before they too, before you. I, isn't from, there, I'm, I'm what sorry. I'm trying to say is, is isn't this, there some form of surveillance to ensure that, you know, I mean, whoever is I found to with to these that. things, in you fact, know, they're last not week. there. But I, I would like you to speak specifically yes. to the issue raised by the end because uh, I remember that the president and the vice president has yes. paid personal visit. The president has said over and over again, let there be a collaboration between the state's governments in terms of the traffic, which because that's the, the, the primary you know, concern of Lagos yes. State, and the uh, NPA, which is supposed to be the business you know, side of things in that environment. You know, so, that if, so long as we continue to have the activities of, of touts Tout. in that um, environment, whatever it is that we are doing, we will not be able to achieve it. Thank and that know. extortion of 100 million naira daily, gosh, you know, it won't stop. So, how, do we, how is the Lagos State government dealing with that one? Okay, like I was trying to explain to you earlier, there was this committee that was set up, because this, we have this affiliation or this cooperation we have with the MPA is being driven by Lagos State and MPA, that we must resolve this anyhow we can. Have so you been able to, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm I, I want us to just get to I'll, I'll get there. Have you been able to identify touts in the, in the we area? Have. Have, has have, have. Have arrests been made? That's exactly what I'm getting to. Okay. Just last week, the area commander of area b went there in the middle of his night with his, with his men and arrested six policemen six mobile policemen from another unit entirely that are supposed to work there on the issue of the the boys that are collecting we have read out the name we have given the name to the cp to the police these are the names of the key leaders of the people here collecting they call them echo mock boys i can't go and arrest them all i need to do is give the names and we can say yeah this is national tv and everybody knows them. So everybody been, knows the when I say, when, what, what I'm trying to say is, is, yes, so the CP is aware, the area commander is aware. We have given them the names. We gave them the names of police officers that are not supposed to be there. They, they move them away. They say they will do what, what, what probably orderly uh, trial or something trial. like that. But for this stout, and the same thing we did with last month that we had, they went through the process of discipline. And MPA did the same thing. But for the tout, it fall, it, it's not within my power to arrest stout. All okay. I need to do is take this, these names, identify them, take their videos, if when possible, and give it to which we have done. Okay. Mr. Bello, uh, let's take our eye from the road for a moment and look at the port. How efficient are operations in the port now? Are they efficient enough to prevent the congestion that we see outside? Okay, so um, 
I've said this before, and let me say this again. The two ports of Tinkan and Apapa are currently operating far beyond their installed capacity. Oh. So what it simply means is if you were expecting, say, 500,000 TEUs, probably they are operating at probably about 700. And like I have said also earlier, the city has caught up with the port. There is no space to expand it. So what do you do? You need to improve on the activities in the port. Um, in 2006, Efficiency. when the Nigerian Port Authority concessioned the terminals, there was a development plan and so on and so forth between the Nigerian Port Authority and the terminal operators. And that development plan incre uh, included both the physical development and then deployment of uh, equipment. Mm. The terminal operators have made those agreements. However, everything has evolved. There is need for bigger equipment, more efficient equipment, a better IT system to process the system, and so on and so forth. So we have seen an improvement in terms of efficiency. There is increase in efficiency. Mm. But however, there is room for more. Mm. We have observed system downtime. You understand, in one or two of the terminals, I can mention it here, especially APMT. Whenever APMT terminals is down, it causes a lot of backlog at the back in terms of traffic. What's APMT? That's APM terminal. It's, it's one of the uh, terminal operators, actually. Okay. So what okay. we have done was to sit down with the terminal operators and say, listen, you need to improve on your operations. We have a monitoring and regulatory services department in Nigerian Post Authority. What it does is it has an index that on a monthly basis, we look at the operations of the terminal operators and we grade them based on their operations. And we also go ahead at the end of the quarter to sit with them and say, listen, you have decreased in this, you have improved in this. And we have seen a better synergy mm. between what the terminal operators are doing and the shipping lines, because some of them also have affiliated shipping lines working with them. To improve um, uh, the operations within the port, we came up with a policy uh, of uh, empty container holding bays. Mm -hmm. And we mandated all shipping lines to ensure that they have a holding bay outside the port premises for empties. This is to ensure that when you as an importer takes away your cargo from the port, you go home or wherever you offload it, you shouldn't bring it into the port. You should take it into the, uh, you take, you should take it into the holding bay. Mm. The second thing is we mandated that for every vessel that comes in Nigeria, when it is sailing away, it must take away at least 80% of the total quantity of containers it brought in, either as empty or as export. Mm. Because we were beginning to see Nigeria being turned into more like a dumping ground for empties. And to a large extent, that has worked. And we are ensuring that regularly that is being monitored. Efficiency mm. has increased. So, so talking about, uh, still talking about efficiency, um, I remember, you know, one of the few times that we have raised this issue of uh, activities within the ports. We, one of the things that we found out, even having spoken with the erstwhile MD of NPA, is the number of agencies of government that work within the ports. Um, when some, you know, stakeholders within the ports, you know, when we had opportunity to speak with them, they mentioned something in the region of 15 different agencies and associations working within the ports. And the question we asked at the time was, is there a central controlling body or organization or uh, agency? And uh, when, the, when, the, when we had a conversation with the Minister of Transport, the Honorable Minister of Transport, he said, well, that's supposed to be the assignment of the NPA. And, but uh, when we had the conversation again, another conversation with the MD of the NPA, he said, look, I don't have authority over customs. I don't have authority over so many, some agencies of government like that, but they operate within the ports. So in terms of coordinating activities, of agencies of government that the MD or the acting MD of the NPA does not have authority over, and they find that one way or another they impinge on the smooth running or activities of the NPA. You have a job on your hands. I'm yes, just wondering, how, how, what's the what's the thinking? So um, let's remember that in May 2017, um, there was this uh, presidential directives in terms of ease of doing business, mm. and the essence of that was to ensure you know, reduction of bureaucratic bottlenecks as it affects operations within the port. Yeah. It's also to improve transparency within the port. 
and also for the ports to operate on 24 hours. That is, let's say, a papa. Now, one of the, so number 18, number 20, number 22, 23, 24, and 25. That uh, was that all the government agencies working within the ports are supposed to work together. They are supposed to collapse their, their activities into more like an umbrella. So I think about eight agencies of government or so were allowed to work within the port. So when a vessel comes in, they are supposed to go board the vessel at the same time. And currently, I can confirm to you that we have that. And then there is supposed to be bus in, bus out, both for dock workers and what have you. That is also in place. And then going into the vessel also, Nigerian Post Authority is the agency of government that is providing the movement to the vessel in and out to go and bring in the vessel, inspect it, and so on and so forth. So that collaboration has actually improved tremendously. Um, we have seen that it has reduced the waiting time of vessels before they are, uh, the terminal operators start offloading the vessels. So that collaboration is in place and it has improved drastically. As for multiple government agencies um, having different checkpoints, that is in place. In some places, in some parts, so you have an instance where an agency of government has a checkpoint here and then they have another one and another one. But collaboration with these government agencies has helped to reduce such incidences. There are cases whereby probably a container has been inspected at point A. That is where it's supposed to be inspected. And then when it gets to the gate, another government agency stops it and then inspects it again mm. and keeps yeah. it there for 30 minutes. Exactly. And then we have said, no, that cannot happen. There's a presidential directive on this. If you have to do that, then we need to know why are you doing this. And yeah. it, it was becoming prevalence and... It was happening again, again, and again. The prevalence was high, and that has been discussed over time. And I think it has reduced. But there is room for more collaboration between government agencies and Nigerian Post Authority. Okay. To reduce the pressure on the roads, which is causing the traffic, which has become his headache, <laughs> <laughs> we hear that barges are now moving containers to the port. I mean... Um, on a scale of 1 to 100, how many, what, what percentage of the containers going to the port uh, is moved by, by, by barges? And how has it affected operations at the ports? So what we have currently are about 59 barge licenses that we have issued to different companies that have applied to be given these licenses. And they have various sizes of barges, and some of them are either self-propelled or not. What we did was to increase the movement of cargo, whether the import or empty containers from one part of the port to the other mm -hmm. or from two off-dock locations and bonded terminals. So you can see approximately probably about 10 to 15 percent of the cargo. There is an increase now. Is that that is very minimal. But you know what? Imagine, Sorry. If, <laughs> <laughs> imagine, imagine if you are taking off, let's say, 500 trucks off the road. I need you to look at it in quantum. And we held a meeting with the, time, with the badge operators. And we said, okay, you know what? We need to look at the safety standards of your badges. We need to increase the activity of badge operators. And we are encouraging them to come together mm -hmm. and find funding. If we need to get involved, we will. They need to look at, we need to look at the quality of their badges. So we created minimum safety standard for trucks. And we have just created one for badge for operators. Badges. Approximately how many uh, containers can a badge carry? So it depends on the size of the badge. Okay. You understand? Some can between... carry... Between... So let's say between 20 to, say, 50. It depends on the size, actually. Whoa. There are massive... There, okay. are, there, are, there are big size uh, badges that are being 50 brought in... 50 will help you. By, <laughs> <laughs> so there, there are big size badges that are brought in by some of the shipping lines, or let me say terminal operators, that actually can carry bigger. We have seen applications that people have sent in in the past few weeks mm. with badges that actually will eventually carry... Uh, almost 70 or so containers, but we are being careful here. We need to ensure the quality of the badge, mm -hmm. the safety of the badge, and then let me just add a bit more. What we realized with the badge operators was most of the badges they didn't have communication equipment okay. on them, and okay. so we have come up with an SOP and a requirement that you need to meet for you to meet that minimum safety standard. Mm. You must okay. have a communication system. Okay. Okay. And then the quality of the badge must be determined by a department in Nigerian Post Authority. If it's a tugboat, that means it's not a self-propelled badge. Mm -hmm. We also need to know 
the quality of that badge. We need mm. to avoid situations whereby we have an accident in the middle of the okay. channel. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Then there were issues to do with badges operating at night. And we felt that wasn't very safe. Mm. And we have stopped that. Okay. Uh, there was double banking of badges, you know, when you go by the birth and we have acts at that stops. Mm. And we have seen very good um, uh, improvement in the quantity of cargo being moved around using badges. What we are trying to do now is to make sure that we streamline their operations and implement the SOP that we have come up with. Do they have some kind of call up or they can arrive whenever they want? Okay, so we have started uh, developing a call up system for badges. Um, the PPP department is working on that currently. There are some proposals to that. The same way you have a call up system for trucks, we are also going to have one okay. for, for badges. I, I hope there is no traffic on the water this time around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, Too I, many badges. <laughs> and I also uh, you know, expect that that will help you. I, I, no, no. I want to take you up on you know, uh, ensuring the waterway uh, is good enough for the badges because you know, there's also been talk around. Uh, decentralizing the ports will come to that one but let me let me let me ask you uh, mr Giwa. Uh, one of the issues that have been one of the considerations that have been made about is uh, about decentralizing the ports is uh, concerning is it lecky or Epe ports lecky, uh, agree, now the, one of the challenges that a number of people have talked about is that of roads now if the traffic from badagri to Oweri it's going to take like 10 days and uh, the person who is going to move his truck from Akpakpa to Oweri, it's going to take him about maybe one or two days. He would rather stay in, Oweri, in, in Akpakpa and clog Akpakpa ports. So in, in terms of the traffic management for that route, uh, maybe the Badagri or and all those other you know, port considerations in Lagos, what's the plan? to ensure that at least there can be a measure, okay? Because the concern for the businessman is the integrity of his goods and services, his goods, his products and all, and the time it'll take to move those things from what, whatever part of Lagos or whatever port in Lagos or anywhere in Nigeria to where he's supposed to take them. Okay, so basically, let me, I'll give you an example of the Lekki deep, deep Sea that is coming up next year by the grace of God. So what is going to happen is that that will serve uh, the interland. So someone was saying that the people of Lekki has, they will turn Lekki to a papa again. But that's not how it's going to happen. It's already a papa. <laughs> <laughs> the traffic is I already horrendous. When we talk about traffic, I don't know if you can allow me to digress a bit. When we see traffic, I see progress. That's the, honest, that, that's the first thing. But traffic that is not managed is chaos. So what are we doing? We are managing traffic. Lagos has 244 vehicles uh, per kilometer density. That's that. You, you, and then the average of, this, of the Nigeria is 15 vehicles per kilometer. That's the truth. So wow. what it means is that there are more 244. vehicles. Yes, per kilometer. Well, so, if we had oh, a large saying, transportation what, what system, means, we would have means, to all put our cars on the road. Of course. And that's what Lagos State is doing. We have the intermodal integrated transportation system that is being put this coming. Year. Look at what is happening in CMS. Look at the red line, the blue line that is coming up. You understand? And then see what Lackfell is doing. So we'll get there. You see, Lagos State attracts a lot of people because of the infrastructure that is being put in place. But there's pressure on the infrastructure. And that was how I was trying to talk to you about what is happening in Tinkan. I said, look at the Papa. We have made improvement there. But the other axis, Tinkan axis to mile two. Mm. For example, the road is one third of the road is bad. That even a car ordinarily cannot drive through. And at least twice in a week, a truck will fall on that Oshodia Papa Express Road. Because the road is bad. It is not for me to fix that road. That is for the federal government to fix. And I'm, another thing I should talk to that is causing this traffic around a Papa around mile two Oshodia Papa because I'm trying to differentiate it yes. for you. Mile mm -hmm. two Tinkan Axis is there are MPA's consult and that's TTP. There are some things that they ought to put in place For that has been done in a papa axis. For instance. Such as? Okay. The infrastructure for these trucks to be hold, held down at satellite truck parks. What is happening that those infrastructures are not there. This is how it's meant to work. You're supposed to come from a satellite truck, but that has an access barrier. And that access barrier is connected to the port. So if you do not come from that, from that 
uh, uh, some night truck park, when you get to the park, the access barrier at the port will not open. It's not yet in place. And also, he, he spoke about the terminal, terminal operators. He, they, of course, they have the holding base where empty containers are supposed to go. But ask me, are these terminal operators, are they collecting these trucks from them? That's why you go to, you go to Mile 2, you go to Satellite Park and all those places. And you see trucks there. Most of the start holding base for these satellite parks, uh, for, this old, uh, for these terminals, are there. But what happens? The terminal, the terminal operators tell the truckers to pay before they collect the empty containers from them. I, I don't know if you understand that. So what is going to happen? Those, those, the people in that, in that area will be saying, Lagos State, come and see traffic, come and see, uh, what is it called, over here, trucks all over here. And what do we do as a state? Because we have the responsibility to protect other residents in that area. But then you don't also forget that, uh, you know, from what he has talked about, yes. it's the collaboration between Lagos State and... Oh, and, and it's NPA. working very well. Exactly. We so, meet twice in a week. Exactly. MPA, TTP, and Lagos State, we meet twice, Tuesdays and Thursdays, at least one hour. And we have seen tremendous... Yeah, so, I, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get okay. to it that we should also break it down that we are winning. We, this problem has been there for so long. Okay. But ask me. But Nigerians can't we win. Can't yes, wait. I understand exactly. that. It's my job to give it to you. Sir, <laughs> Nigerian Ports Authority. We're talking as if there are only two ports in Nigeria, Apapa and Tinkan. That is not, that is not the truth. What is happening to the other ports? And is there work going on such that we reduce the pressure on the ports in Lagos State? Yeah, so there are many ports outside Lagos, naturally. So you have Calabar, you have Wari, you have uh, One, One. And you have Rivers Port also. Mm -hmm. um, so what is going on is, first of all, let me just clear this fact that the Nigerian Post Authority cannot decide for consignees, for importers, where they take their cargo to. So, yes, we understand about 70% of the cargo uh, coming into Nigeria actually uh, comes in through Lagos. Through Lagos. Uh -huh. So, if there is a high concentration of industries, probably whether it is Lagos or Gun Ondo and so on and so forth, it is only most likely that the importer of any raw material going into those factories will actually bring them in through Lagos. Yes. However, what we have done was to offer tariff reliefs at those port locations so that it will encourage shipping lines and importers themselves to bring in their cargo through those ports. Is it working? And yes, it has started working. We have seen a gradual, but you know, careful increase. We have seen, the, the, we, we were hoping there would be a jump, but we're not no. seeing that jump. So okay. what we need to do is to also do it's something. Like crawling. Again. Uh -huh. No, it's not a crawl. They are working, but we thought it would just start running very fast. <laughs> <laughs> so however. So we are in a hurry as well. Oh well, yes we are, but, but, but however, we, within this month, we'll also start looking at the tariffs in those uh, that we have offered in those locations. Mm. We have encouraged the use of um, flat bottom vessels to come into Calabar and other locations. Uh, you have seen that, that, we have seen that that has started coming in. The problem with these ports, let me repeat it again. They have common three, three common issues. First of all, the port in Wari is about 109 kilometers away from the ocean. So that means from the beginning of the channel to the port in Wari is about 109 kilometers. And then the one in Calabar is 101 kilometers. Hmm. Rivers port is about 69 kilometers. What is the implication of this? So the implication of this is that it's multiple. So let me say Lagos is about 9.25 kilometers. So that means it's like you traveling. So from the fairway boy, fairway boy is a marker mm -hmm. where you say this is the beginning of the ocean and the end of it and this is where Nigerian Post Authority pilots bring in the vessels to berth at port. It means travel time is longer. It means maintaining that channel is more expensive. It means siltation is also very high. It also means that there are security issues which we know in that part of the country, unfortunately. It, the ports in Lagos, you can take in and take out your vessel at any time of the day or night. But in that part of the country, there is a little window in the morning and afternoon where you can take out those vessels also. Mm. Each of the ports also have certain distinct issues. Calabar port, I have said it before and I will say it here. Uh, uh, Leicester would worry. Worry port has a breakwater that has collapsed probably nine to ten years ago. Wow. A breakwater is a physical infrastructure that is built in the sea to break the action of sea waves into the uh, channel mm -hmm. and also to reduce sedimentation, 
to reduce siltation into the channel. It has collapsed. It is 8.5 kilometers long. Currently, Royal Hascon is doing a study on that. They have finished their geotechnical studies. They are now designing the breakwater. Wariport also has a pipe that is about seven, seven meters buried, an NNPC pipe. It therefore means you cannot dredge, dredge. deeper than seven meters. Oh, God. With the economies of scale, it means that you cannot oh. bring big, bigger vessels. Yes. I, you know, I was going to ask you about dredging. Oh. I think I'm not going to ask you that question anymore. Well, you got the answer. <laughs> and then as for as for as for uh, Calabar, of course, is is distant and is long, far away from the port. Um, the dredging there hasn't been done for so long. Uh, there is a matter in the court between MPA and the last company that was given the dredging contract. So the matter is subsidies, and I don't want to go into that. But we are working to resolve this out of court. Um, meanwhile, uh, for worry. We, uh, there was a dredging, um, remedial dredging was done about four or so years ago. Uh, this year we are working and we hope that within this year there will be remedial dredging at some certain locations and the Belmar, the entrance into the channel. That will help us bring bigger vessels. Mm. The port has already, you know, its end, its lifespan has already been, it's <laughs> over. So you see that you reconstruct it and all that. And each of these locations also has one limitation. The berth was built with sheet piles when it was built in the 40s or 50s. So there's a limitation to how deep you can actually dredge that part. So that means these days everybody wants to bring bigger vessels. We understand it's cheaper, it brings more. But there is no port location in Nigeria that has more than 13.5 meters. And that's why we are saying Lake Deep Sea Port we just can't wait for it to come on stream. Mm, mm. It's going to have, the first phase will have 16.5 meters. So that means any vessel that draws, let's say, 15 meters or so can come into that port. And then the businesses that we have, the marine businesses that we have been losing to neighboring countries will actually start coming back into Nigeria. The second phase of Lake Deep Sea will take the draft there to up to 20 meters. Mm. It also means the channel will also be deeper than 20 meters. I'm, I'm, I'm but wondering. there is a plan. Okay. Currently, the Nigerian Post Authority, working with the Ministry of uh, Transportation, the Minister of Transport has mandated and has requested that the Nigerian Post Authority sits down with the terminal operators to think of how to reconstruct the ports in Lagos. Mm. Reconstruction here means n not just the physical infrastructure. You also need to have better equipment, better IT system, improve efficiency and that discussion has started and okay. we'll soon, we'll soon I, I, i'm just wondering how much millions or billions of naira or dollars is going into this please don't answer that question here but let me let me ask um, Lagos uh, State is working. mr giver uh, oh, well, <laughs> i can tell you that, <laughs> well, uh, that in, in terms of collaboration i mean you've told us the things that you know is happening in that committee that has been formed uh, is there, is there something that people ought to know in order to gain their understanding and confidence about what is being done, especially in this collaboration, to reduce the pressure and the frustrations that Dalero talked about, which has chased, chased many people away from their homes in the environment? Oh, Dalero, I can tell you, if you have friends or people that you know in Papa, you can give them a call right now and see how is Papa, And I can talk to that. There's a mall in Papa in Park Lane. When we, earlier this year, I went, when we got to Papa in February, I wanted to go there. And there were only three shops open in that shop right mall. I'm sure I was, I felt bad. Pained. However, I, I, felt, I felt pained. So, however, I went there sometimes in June, and the whole place was filled up. Also, you need to look at Creek Road. I, when we started this operation, we went around. Creek Road was virtually empty. It was a road that was constructed by Lagos State Government. And trucks were all over it. Mm -hmm. And I saw that there were only three buildings that were functional there. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you now, go there, it has increased. That's, that's all honest truth. Okay. So you can have So life is returning to our oh, papa. Life is returning to our papa. Thank you. Okay. Well, so, that is one I, I, I need to say something, if, if you allow me. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, and that is the truckers, the people that operate the trucks, the hub is easy to understand. What happened is this. Uh, they want to get to the port. And they will do anything possible to get to the port faster than they should. I don't know. Because there's a system in place. It's just like you want to get on a plane that is not for you. Mm -hmm. So what they will do is that they will pay so much money 
to circumvent the system. So what I'm saying, and that leads to extortion, I know that for a fact, mm. okay. that when you want to do what you're not supposed to do, and okay. then you get you to, to the way, you it. pay for it. Okay. Yeah. So please, the truckers, we, I'm begging you to be patient, let the system work. We're getting there, we're not yet. I hope and you they told should them. take their turn. I, yes. hope, I hope you told them that you're going to be on this program because I'm not sure that they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. <laughs> Mr. 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 Koko, um, yeah. is there something else that we haven't asked you that can give, that can inspire hope, just as I've asked him, that can inspire hope in people because people can't wait. Uh, we have waited for so long, we are no longer patient, so to speak. So, what inspiration can you give to people that can assure them that, look don't worry uh, within we're, the next we're, we're getting on top of it we're months. on top we're getting on top no, of no, it no no he says he's on top of it already you listen to him he's a confident guy did you okay. say that sir? <laughs> we are on top of it oh okay. is it? all right <laughs> my, my bad <laughs> so so let me just say something statistically when you look at it in may we had probably about twenty thousand trucking and truck out in a papa and thing can exist by last month, we had over 50,000. And what does that tell you? More than double. There is an improvement, okay? okay? And then, like he said, ask those that live in Apapa. The residents of Apapa, we feel their pain. We understand what they are going through. But I can assure you that they can get home faster and easier now. And then the trucks also. Okay. We have observed a slight reduction in cost of trucking also. Why? Because the trucks are not spending longer time in a papa access. We have held meetings with Federal Ministry of Works, the director of works in the state, and the contractors, and we are pleading that they work on the Tinkan uh, axis of that road. If they are able to sort out the bad portion between uh, Sunrise and Mr. Biggs and so on and so forth, that would improve. Mm. But let me also make a commitment here that we are not sleeping. We are ensuring that everything that needs to be done will be done. We know you and are I have told TTP the, 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 the we, we have told TTP that mm. if they do not sit up, mm. we will provide a second app to serve as competition to them. No, you okay. should do Probably that. competition do that. will make sure that TTP sits up. So we have given them mandate within the month to ensure that all the inf physical infrastructure that needs to be at the satellite truck time. It's one thing to have this infrastructure in place. Oh. It's another thing altogether to engage these, these truckers because uh, this is not the first time I'm hearing complaints about them. We, meet with them. Well, we, we met with them. We met with the truckers three weeks ago and what I said at that place is just tell us. Just say your minds. And yeah. that's when they came with an account. They said money is being collected through POS and we realized that the truckers are not yeah. using their app on their phone. They don't know how to. So what they do is they come to you they pay you so that you pay TTP, and then you collect a commission. And we hmm. said, guys, you can do this yourself. yourself. So we are coming up with, you, you understand, yeah. sensitization to help yeah. them to use this. We also told them, listen, you are in control of this. You know the bad eggs amongst you. You know yeah. those that go to print fake plate numbers. Bring them out. Okay. Mr. Yeah. Koko, quickly, quickly before, you, before you sign off. Um, do we envisage more activity at the ports when after, after really takes off? Yes, we, we do that. We, we, expect, uh, we, we expect more activity. So Nigerian Post Authority, working with every sector of the economy, is ensuring that Nigeria takes advantage of this after. Okay. So ours is to provide enabling environment for ease of doing business and trade facilitation. All right. Well, it, it's definitely... We're going, I'm pretty sure we're going to have you here again to give us your scorecard again. But well, for now, we have to thank you very much. Mohamed uh, Bello Koko is acting managing director of Nigerian Ports Authority. Thank you for your time. Thank you so as much. As well as Honorable Shola Giwa, who is senior special assistant to Governor Sanwolu on Central Business District and head of operations at Papua Traffic Management and Enforcement Committee. Thank you so much it's for your time. It's a pleasure. So, Sunrise returns after now with something. Equally interesting, if not more, to stay with us. Yes, we hear you, BJ. We hear you, we hear you. Ah, thank you for staying with us. Now we have um, a panel of three, a lady and a gentleman, who have come to tell us about something very interesting 
happening later this month. You mean a lady and two gentlemen? I'm just saying, because you, it's Independence Day, so. Oh, sorry, it was yesterday. Cheers again. Sometimes I wonder if my partner is actually here with us, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, well, keep wondering. You know, you never can tell what you'll find. You see, you need spiritual intervention. That's why we are yeah, yeah, we're talking We're having this, this conference. conference. Yes. yes you know. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will be hosting its general conference this month. Mm. A worldwide gathering of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints where the church leaders from all over the world mm. share messages that focus on the living Christ and his gospel. Well, like I said, we have a panel in here who are going to tell us more about this. I'd like to welcome Elder Solomon Aliche, uh, Area 70 of the church. Thank you. We have Sister Esohe Frances Ikwawa, who is organizer, organization advisor, Africa West Area. Thank you. Good morning. And we also have Elder Christian Chibundu, also of Area 70. Thank you for having me. And thank you all very much for coming. So, or should, no, ladies first. <laughs> I was wondering when that was going to come.